next up we have Tom Hudson. I see him often on Twitter. I've been following him for quite some time since he rewrote an O'Reilly book. Uh, oh God, I'm, yeah. Uh, please that. give him a super warm welcome. Hi, I'm Tom Hudson, also known as Tom Nom Nom. I do have some cheap stickers with me if you should want one for some reason. I'm gonna to talk to you about big numbers. So straight off the bat, a million seconds is 11 days. Just have a, a bit of a think, don't like do any calculations. What's your intuition for a billion seconds? 32 years is a billion seconds. It's a vastly different number, and yet we group millionaires and billionaires all the time. But that's like grouping millionaires and a teenager who's just got their first minimum wage paycheck. It's a bit weird, right? Even bigger number, 52 factorial, the number of possible shuffles for a deck of cards. It's roughly eight times 10 to the 67. So that big picture we had in the talk earlier on of the universe with all the things in it, that's roughly how many things were in that picture. You can't imagine this number, and I know you can't imagine it because this is more than the number of neurons that are in your brain. Numbers work like this. Y equals X. One is one, two is two, three is three. That sounds really obvious, right? And the reason I point it out is because we think of numbers this way, roughly kind of logarithmically. Once we get past a certain point, they just go, wow, they're big, big numbers. And the reason for that is we are hardwired to deal with this situation. If I have to take on one lion or two lions, that's an obvious choice, right? You're going to go one lion. You're probably going to die anyway, but you've got a much, much better chance here. And that's how our brains work. If you have to decide between 60 and 64 lions, well, it doesn't matter, does it? <laughs> Not even slightly. Just certain death or very certain death. Those are your options. And once you become aware of how we think of numbers, you can use that to your advantage. So what's a better deal? 50% off a Mars bar or 1% off a that's badly drawn Nissan GTR? <laughs> like 50% off, that sounds better, doesn't it? But 1% off that will give you a holiday. Like, if you were going to buy it anyway, at least, but 50% off a Mars bar for 30p, you can get what? Well, another Mars bar with 50% off. <laughs> <laughs> and the reason this is a problem when you work with computers is computers include big numbers. This is a 3 gigahertz CPU, albeit badly drawn. It does 3 billion things a second. That is a big number. You probably can't really comprehend that. And there's a lot of other numbers involved in this, the latency figures. And here, we usually... When we talk about these things, we change the units to kind of cheat and make the numbers seem more reasonable. So register access, the little tiny bits of memory that are for numbers that you're dealing with right now, 0.3 nanoseconds to access those. Level one cache, 1 1.5 nanoseconds, a bit longer. Level two cache, three nanoseconds. Don't worry if you don't really understand about what caches are. It doesn't really matter. It's the memory that's on the actual chip. Level three cache, 30 nanoseconds. You can kind of compare these. Then you get into the rest of the computer. So system RAM, 0.1 microseconds. Mechanical hard drive, six milliseconds. SSD, 80 microseconds. Like, they all seem kind of comparable because they're very small. It's actually the opposite problem to being very big. We've just changed the bases and they made them big numbers. It's very difficult for humans to compare these things. So I want to talk to you about the one hertz CPU instead of the three gigahertz CPU. It's three billion times slower. Register access, one second. I think of that as like, that's your brain. You're thinking about something right now. You maybe add a couple of numbers together, do a bit of a multiplication, something like that. About a second, that seems all right. Level one cache, eh, I've got a piece of paper printed out. It's got more information on it. I can fit more on there, but it takes a little bit longer to find things. I've got to scan up and down the page. I've got to find like the bit of information I want. What heading am I looking for? Four and a half seconds. Level two cache. Nine seconds, maybe a stack of papers sat on your desk. I've got to go, oh, which was the right one? I've got to find which actual piece of paper I'm looking for. Then I've got to find the right heading, the right paragraph. There's the bit of information I want. And I can pull into my registers, into my local memory. And I'm going to finish way ahead of time, which is awesome. Level three cache, a bit more like a book. 39 seconds, 40. You're approaching a minute at this point when the first thing was one second. So I've got to go to the index and maybe like look up the term that I'm looking for, find the right chapter. If it's a Haynes manual, it's even worse because it appears four different places and it's not even the right thing you want when you find it. But a minute-ish, level three cache. System RAM, guesses. Five minutes at this point, when a single calculation was taking you a second, we go, oh, we'll store stuff in RAM, right? Because RAM's really fast. Is it really? 
five minutes, that's a long time. I've got to go like down the hall into a different room and find the bookcase, pull out the right book that happens to be on the right subject, probably get the wrong book, get the different book, find the index, find the subject I need, turn to that chapter, scan through, find the paragraphs. It's a long time to wait, right? Mechanical desk, guesses. Pretty much. If the book was in China, <laughs> and I had to walk to China to get the book. <laughs> like that, obviously you wouldn't swim. I didn't include swimming in my calculations, but you have to get a ferry across the seas, but you can mostly walk there nine months. It's a long time. Every time you page something to disk and think, oh, I'll just put it there. Like think of that as, oh wait, no, that's like waiting nine months for something instead of just being able to think about it straight away. I'll get it in a minute or from the next room if it's in system RAM. Like it's a, when you put it that way, it's a crazy thing to do if you want to build a performance system. If you are gonna hit mechanical disk, <coughs> you are just dead if you want a fast system. And that's why SSDs are awesome. It's like in a world where every book took nine months of walking to get, suddenly you've got Amazon Prime. Which is why if you put one of these in your computer, it's just way faster all of a sudden. It boots up way quicker. Everything happens faster. It's amazing. They're one of my favorite things in the whole world. But it gets worse. If you need to go over the network to say, load the Google homepage, something I do, I don't know, probably 100 times a day, mostly to check that I've spelled things right. Because for some reason, Google is the best spell check in the world. If Marty McFly, in Back to the Future 1, if it was possible, <coughs> in 1955, started to request the Google homepage, in Back to the Future 2, when he got to the future, it would be just about loaded. <laughs> which. Originally, we were talking about multiplication things taking a second. So within computers, there's this scale of everything from a second to 60 years, and yet we just treat them all as the same thing because we're not really used to the scale. Thank you.